Yes, we are. Okay, it's a little after 7.30, so I'll call this meeting to order. <clears throat> unusual <coughs> times, or usual measures, I guess, for unusual times, but our first time that we're going to do most of our meeting, uh, majority of us, by video and also by live stream as well. So we welcome all those that are coming and joining us tonight in our regular meeting of, of council during this time. Resolved that the agenda for the April 7th regular meeting of council be adopted and approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Resolved that the minutes of the March 17th regular council meeting and the March 24th and March 31st committee of the whole meetings be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? I see some hands. Carrie. Resolved that this regular council meeting be closed to allow a public hearing. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wentoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. I call this hearing to order for conditional use application number one, 2020. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following conditional use application. Proposed secondary site and basement on the property located on Lot 15, Block 3, Plan 21440, which is 304 Hill Avenue. The requirements of Section 169 of the Planning Act have, have been adhered to. Are there any persons that would like to make representation to the hearing? Please state your name and civic address. There is none. Do we have any discussion on this at this time? Then? No discussion, eh? You can allow discussion, yes. Any discussion on this before I close the hearing, councillors? Councillor Delorier. Does uh, uh, have any recommendations for any conditions that they'd like to see put on this? Here. I, uh, I, I asked the building inspector just to, to brief me on on his plans and and he's satisfied with uh, with what the owner has the building inspector didn't have, or present any conditions uh, for council he's confirmed the secondary egress requirements and, and other requirements to allow the secondary suite Councilor Deloria did you hear that yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Councilor Gray do you have a question No. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Okay. Upon hearing all persons present, I adjourn this hearing. 5.1. That's good. That's what you just went through. All oh, right, I'm sorry, we don't have to do that again, do we? No. Pardon? No. Okay, so we reopen the meeting. So, uh, resolved the regular council meeting be reopened to the public. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Result that conditional use application number one, 2020, to allow a secondary suite with RS6 residential family zone at Lock 15, Block 3, Plan 21440, 304 Hill Avenue, be approved. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Resolved that the letter dated March 11, 2020 for the Minister of Municipal Relations be received as information. Moved by 
Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councilor Friesen. Discussion. This is on the basket funding, I believe. Mr. Poole, is there any comments on that at all? Mr. Crow? Uh, no, it's the uh, same as last year. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the letter dated March 25th, 2020 from the Minister of Municipal Relations be received as information. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? This is the uh, letter addressing uh, the 2020 flood preparation uh, program and that we are eligible for funding, I guess, if, if it needed. Any discussion? Councilor Morio? Uh, no. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Result that the Manitoba Communities in Blue communication be received as information. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by <coughs> Councilor White. Discussion, Councillor Friesen. I'm just wondering where that leaves us with uh, funds for our local communities in blue. I know they won't be having a special uh, seminar and uh, they're not holding meetings as such in other communities. Um, we would like to still go ahead and plant flowers as we always have. We won't be having judges come up. So I'm um, just wondering where we are with funds. I think that more or less the letter is to state that there will be no like judging and stuff like that. But I think that as far as the municipality goes, if we have funds set aside for that, and if council chooses to pass the budget, which that has been already included in it, then I would think that we would proceed with whatever planting that we want to do. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Results of the memo dated March 31st, 2020 from the AMM Insurance Program be received as information. <coughs> moved by, I need a mover. Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. No, I was seconding it. <laughs> um, anything there, Mr. Crow? Uh, no, that's no uh, interest. It's really just a, um, uh, a memo. Um, sorry, I've been on my mind. Yeah, no, this was just the insurance renewals uh, for, for the municipalities. Not necessarily any changes at all. Uh, no, no, there's no great changes uh, going on, that's for sure. Yeah. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.1 result of the director for public works report be received moved by councillor friesen seconded by councillor white discussion questions just raise your hand if you have a question councillor morio uh, Mr. Poole, how is the negotiations with Mr. Falk going? Uh, <clears throat> right now, right now, it's basically between uh, now that now that we have uh, clear intentions of what he wants to build, which is mobile trailers. So they are they are not the modular homes, which which I believe he was. Uh, explaining uh, uh, some time ago but they are they're confirmed as trailers so there still won't be a need for zoning change but according to our our incentive plan policy uh he's not eligible for that even if we wanted him to be so the incentive plan is a is a no-go either way uh he is still looking like he's still looking for 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 value, I guess, or if he wants to purchase them for 
for less than what they're than what we're asking. But uh, we're just we're moving back and forth. I guess I, I just don't know where where I can sign on the dotted line. Uh, I know that you guys wanted to see more information on what was being built. Now that we have that, there's no zoning requirements required. It will be deemed a mobile trailer park according to our zoning bylaw. Uh, is Council Oak still okay with that offer? What I had, what I had proposed to him in a, in a draft was basically the big change is, is that he would he would construct each house on on each lot and uh, and have a penalty of fifteen hundred dollars for every lot after five years that he did not develop. I know that uh, Councillor Gray has, has talked to me and and, uh, and looked and wants me to look at other options, which which makes sense. It's fair. He 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 basically says the opposite that he can he can pay an amount up front. And after a certain point of time uh, uh, that he would be given to build each house, we would rebate him, say say that we charge him $3,000 a lot, we would rebate him $2,800 so he still gets his $200 offered per lot. But every house or every house that he builds, it would be a $2,800 rebate every time he finishes a, a property. Councillor uh, Gray, and then more. Yes, my, uh, your worship. Um, I'm trusting everyone can hear me. Yes. I, I have serious concerns actually about the way, because it was presented as modular homes, which would be then affixed to the property. And, and the start of my conversation with um, Superintendent Poole was um, that uh, was that we needed to ensure that he was affixing the ground, but he's not. These are going to be mobile homes, and so the lots. Uh, firstly, it impacts the tax revenue we're going to get, and so the idea of giving them a huge discount when we're, we're because the dis the deal was we were going to get ongoing tax revenues um, has now turned out not to be an accurate statement, and so I, I think there are real issues about that anyway, um, and certainly I would want us to look at what the regulations or what the rules would be for people keeping their um, uh, trailers on those properties and so on if we're giving these discounts. That's the first thing. Secondly, though, it seems to me that what he's asking for is um, a $2,800 gift. And, and I again, I don't have a big problem with that, although I think some of the other councillors raised concerns last time about the, the, uh, the amount of that discount. <laughs> um, but what I do have a concern about is that he not go through this process and get the land and then um, basically he has an option because that's what he's really paying a two thousand dollar option because he could go through and never build a thing in five years and all he's lost is two thousand dollars in my view we would be far wiser to say to him that the sale price for the property is and, and pull a number i don't care thirty thousand dollars which is approximately what we were saying was worth um, and that for each unit that he moved on there and left on there, we would, and so we would have a payment down at $2,000 and we would have payments as they're due every year on the anniversary date, he would have another two lots he would have to pay for. And at that point, um, if he's built them, we would waive the payment. That's, that's how we would build it into the contract. So that he in fact builds them and puts them on the property and if he doesn't he still has to buy all the properties so he defaults in any year he has to pay all of it because and that way we're not on the risk we're not at the risk at any level he's the one who's at, at risk for what he's doing but I, I, again i think there are parts of the plan that need to be developed in terms of of, of having trailers on there which is what it is apparently i i, I didn't realize that from last time um, and Mr. Poole um, clear, clarified that. Um, and so that's really an issue. Anyway, those are the two points that I had to raise. Okay, thank you. Councillor Delorier. I, I guess I prefer the, uh, I prefer the, oh, I'm not even talking. We can I hear prefer you. the method, the method <laughs> where we rebate him. It's easier for us to give him money than to get money at a later date. Um, 
So if we if we were to do something as far as a, a discount on the loss in, in in return for having done something, I would rather us give the discount after the thing is done. So the, the second option that Derek, Derek had been spoke of would be my favorite option. And I and I guess comment on um, a comment on yours, on um, Councillor Gray's comment. We got to keep in mind this is not exactly how we saw that on our property in Town Square, but I don't want to see a trailer park there, but I don't think we're going to see anything there anytime soon. You chose yours. You think there's a two together, yeah. Your, your speakers are too close together, Councillor Delorier. You, 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 you got to keep your cameras or your units away from each other because uh, there was a little bit of feedback there. Are you able to repeat that again for us? Okay. I can repeat that now. Thank you. I guess my preferred option is is us paying the money or uh, him paying the money and us discounting it after the uh, the thing that we're discounting it for has been done, i.e., putting a putting a a trailer on there. And on Councillor Gray's comments, I think we need to keep in mind that uh, that's not very highly sought after property in the town of Swanover. We're not having people banging down the doors to put something on there. I know we we spent a lot of effort getting the trailer park off there but if these are brand new trailers uh, maybe it's worth looking at councillor gray can i just make a suggestion that everybody mute your your mute yourself when you're not talking except for the chair thank you and that way there won't be feedback thank you so i guess does Mr. Poole, do we have some clear direction of where we want to go with this then? Or is this something that we want to maybe discuss maybe a little bit further in camera then? Because there are some, I think some other delicate things that we need to talk about. So that might be better to defer that to camera. Councilor I don't know if it needs to be. Councilor Delorier. I guess I don't know if it needs to go into camera. Um, I guess it is a negotiation as such, so maybe it should then. Um, I, I really would like to see something go there. And I mean, a, a, trailer, a, a trailer park with brand new trailers is better than an empty lot. I think that there's nothing wrong with, with that. I agree with you, but I think that if we're gonna talk about details of, of a, a contract or something like that, then maybe we should be talking about that in camera. Councilor Gray. Yes, Your Worship. I, I, I don't really care in one way or another, but I think it's, it is appropriate to go in camera. So at the end of the now move that we, I don't know if we need to move it now or if we only want to just defer it to that time. If you need a mover, I'll move that we move it to the in-camera session. That's good. Thank you. So going back to the uh, point of 10.1, uh, uh, where we have the resolution on the Director of Public Works. Was there any questions? Councillor, uh, or Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Um, I've got a few actually. First of all, starting with the point that was just uh, raised and moved into camera. Um, in the discussion that was held in the Cal meeting, I'm not sure if trailers were um, what everybody was anticipating. So I'm not sure in terms of negotiations, I think that's fine to go into camera, but I'm not sure. I think that it should go back to a, a committee of a whole meeting as well to ensure that that's um, all of council's views on it being actual trailers and not mobile homes because I was under the impression that we were having um, modular homes, not not actual trailers with wheels under them. That Mr. Pulal, let you respond. Just to quickly respond, I will need to know if that is in question. I'll need to know that pretty fast. Wilmer is is definitely of the expectation that. You know, he's been told this was zoned a trailer park, <clears throat> and if the town wanted it anything else than that, you know, he's saying, why is it? Why is it there? Why? Why do you have it as a trailer park then? 
So he will want to know right away if we are not wanting trailers on that on that property, even if this negotiation may take several weeks. That question will have to be answered. We'll, we'll have further discussion in camera about okay. that. So what was your next one? Okay, and then the other question, Mr. Poole or administration, where are we with uh, animal control? What is that looking like? And um, I read it in here that there were issues and then by the time an employee got to them, it was over. Um, what is that looking like? And um, for bylaws, well, I th thought I read somewhere. So anyway, the question is, what is how is animal control and bylaw uh, bylaws going currently? Well, right now, as I as I have in the report, uh, we're on a in terms of animal control, we are on a really limited service. So it. Like as the example that you know, if somebody calls in a stray dog walking down the street, we, we can do nothing but send a public works guy, and sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's 20 minutes later, and more often than not, the dog is gone by the time we get there. If we if if a person catches a stray dog and holds onto it for us, then we'll take it. We will take it, and it goes through the typical process with the with the vet. Uh, in terms of what's going to happen this spring, I know myself, Patty, and Charles have met several times on uh, on how we're going to solve this. We've met with the union, and uh, we're like I say in my report, we're we're in the process of trying to find a a solution sooner than later. So we don't have a solid one moving forward right now. There's there's several options on the table, but uh, it's moving forward. Okay, and then my last question is recycling. Um, in terms of commercial recycling, I saw there that you mentioned there were a couple, uh, two I think, um, contacts from commercial users about recycling. There it is too. Uh, there have been contact with two commercial businesses regarding to changes in recycling, expecting more. What are, what are you seeing with those commercial uh, one one was actually an addition uh, uh, because they they were sh sharing but they wanted their own expense for their own business so they they separated from their deal and they wanted their own their own recycling and dumpster the other one was a reduction in service on the recycling side uh, for an apartment building but uh, that's all due to the letter that was sent out at Christmas explaining or prior to Christmas it was explaining the changes uh, the changes coming in our invoicing that we're no longer going to be taxing by assessment, but we'll be straight invoicing for recycling services and solid waste collection for commercial businesses. So we're, we've only seen the two, uh, but we are expecting more. We're sending out a mock invoice this month, and it will have, just to reiterate the information to, to commercial businesses of the changes in invoicing, and, and that's about it. We're just expecting just more change in service. But we'll be ready. <clears throat> Perfect. Thank you. That was all I had, Your Worship. Thank you. Okay. Any uh, dis uh, further discussion? Councilor Gray, did you have anything there? No? Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, all in favor? Oh, sorry. Councilor White, did you have a question? I do, sir. I'm just looking at the clubhouse relatives to give me back about operators to uh, check our water and they, can, they don't make certification if they don't do testing. Uh, I'm a little worried about that statement. So there's the, the Office of Drinking Water has allowed us to, to have backup plans and in the state of an emergency that they would allow the testing with people who are knowledgeable of that testing, not just anybody, but there's also procedures that have to happen in the water plant, for example, changing the a chlorine gas tank. That cannot be done by someone who's just ta told how to do it. You're going to have to have, we're, we're going to have to have a certified operator do that. And that has to be done about once every 20 days in our, in our treatment plant. So that's where we're trying to, to get, uh, uh, what a not temporary, but uh, conditional uh, certification for some of our backup operators in order to do the tasks that will require certification even in an emergency. <clears throat> that makes sense, so thank you. Sorry, I had one more point, sorry. Okay, uh, calls, or Deputy Mayor Matoni. 
Two more questions, actually, and then I'm done, I promise, with you. Um, snow removal at the airport was done by the grader because how come our crews can't operate the bi- bi-directional tractor? We just had a couple guys call in sick, and there was a few guys on vacation at the start of that week, so it was just a, a man car issue. But, so the guy that knows how to drive a grader can't drive the bi-directional? Well, it, it would work either, either, either way. It was okay. just, we had just one operator... Of- yeah, okay, good. and then the other one, uh, just kudos to your crew. I see that you've saved a substantial amount of money on the back truck, so yeah. whenever you can save money, kudos to them. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result that the March 2020 Protective Services Report be received. Moved by... Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? <clears throat> All <coughs> favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.3, Council and CAO report. I will start with Councillor Morio. Um, this week, um, not too much. We just had our committee of the meeting on Tuesday with a number of discussion points that we had um, where we continue to work on the financial plan, which is almost uh, complete and ready for um, public hearing on the 22nd of April. And uh, just a uh, word of thanks to all the people in the community and our workforces for uh, dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic, and I strongly encourage people to heed the recommendations uh, from the province and our public uh, health um, officer regarding social distancing and isolations and things like that, so uh, we can get over this uh, situation sooner rather than later, um, and that's all I have. Okay. Deputy Mayor Tony. Wow, I'm on the spot quick. Um, Yes, we had our, other than our um, committee of a, of a whole meeting, there haven't been a lot of meetings clearly with the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and a lot of that meeting was taken up by budget. Um, I still have concerns and thoughts on the protective services side, and I'm hoping that uh, you know, we'll have more time to look at those. Um, I actually did prepare a little speech for tonight, so... Uh, I'm going to go ahead with that one. Um, So I just want to take a minute to address the COVID-19 pandemic in our community. As a community of the whole, we we should never be, we should be ever so grateful that we have not yet had a reported case. It takes citizens like you to flatten the curve and protect yourselves and each other alike. I couldn't be prouder to be part of this community in both my role in office and a general citizen. To the businesses within our community and in general, you have my attention and you have my respect. I truly feel the issues that you are facing, and I urge you urge you to have the courage to speak, call people close to you, whether it be family, your local health care officers, anyone that you can discuss your current situation. Remember, you are not alone, and this community will stand behind you. We will get through this tough situation together. To those essential workers in the health care field, you are brave, and we thank you for your ongoing efforts. You are appreciated, and please remember how important your role is. To those businesses that are that serve all your grocery needs, thank you for doing your part, sanitizing and cleaning and putting more people on staff to control the amount of guests in your store, to, pol- to follow provincial guidelines for only some of the measures that you are facing at this time, but we commend you and all your efforts. To the citizens of this community, I understand that all the changes can be frustrating, but remember, all the changes that are being put into place are to protect you and your loved ones. When that store sells, tells you that you should only send one person from your household, please abide by the rule. Don't stomp off. These stores are keeping you safe. You could be in another community that isn't taking this as seriously as ours and be risking your life. <coughs> please keep in mind the social distancing regulations. Please keep your six-foot distance from others and remember to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds and try to keep your hands away from your face. I mentioned to our local Chamber of Commerce, although you may not always see the many efforts happening behind the scenes, I want to take a minute and acknowledge Stacy Grindle, who is working ever so hard through these challenging times to forward valuable information to our local businesses. She is on the phone daily with the President of the Chamber of Commerce and on conference calls with ministers to keep businesses moving in these tri- trying times. 
This includes adding greenhouses to the essential lists, curbside pickup and delivery, along with funeral homes. I also commend Stacy on reaching out to our businesses within the Valley to confirm hours of operation and to ensure they are understanding regulations and providing the necessary resources to continue to operate. I understand that Easter is usually a time for family gatherings, but please don't make the mistake of having those gatherings at this time. Please stay home where you, where you and your families will be safe. So that's my little speech on COVID-19. Um, I appreciate all the efforts from this administration as well on the ongoing um, efforts and information that's being put through from this office. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilor Freeman. I just want to follow that. Good for you, Dilly. I mean, Councilor. Um, kudos to you, who uh, has been a co op every day that I've driven by or gone in, helping out, sanitizing carts, being the greeter. Yes. He was out there today greeting everyone, telling them what to do and what not to do. Good for you. Thank you. Um, also, my. Uh, Gratitude to all the volunteers that are helping out with a lot of the seniors, picking up groceries, taking it to them. Um, Lorianne Monroe from uh, Communities of Care is doing some excellent programs on Facebook to keep the kids uh, active, giving them things to do, things to post, and activities. Kudos to her. Do you know any more about that? Um, and as for meetings, I haven't been to any except here. Thanks. Okay. Councillor White. You're on mute. Shut, uh, turn your mute off. How's that? Uh, working? Yeah. Okay. Uh, compliments to all of our team there, and obviously the community as a whole, and, and I echo Councillor Morrow's comments and Deputy Mayor Montoni's, and one thing we can all do is physical distancing. I use the word physical because social doesn't seem to be working for some of the individuals. Uh, as far as these towards fish has uh, canceled their dinner, but that's, we all know why that is. We met with current bylaw and others trying to look at some other concerns relative to crime and a compliment to the Thomas Hunter Council and executives trying to uh, work with that items. Uh, Pre-known health is very aware of what's going on. They, they meet daily, and, and the uh, executive meets once a week to bring us up to date on what's happening. And they're, they're working so hard trying to make things work. And we're staying optimistic. I want to compliment uh, Mr. Crow on designing our emergency plan for COVID, what to do, and how to get there, and uh, what not to do, and who to look after about responsibilities. So, a community uh, in need and a community growing together, uh, trying to help one another. What a compliment to all of us. Thank you. Councillor Gray. Uh, yes, Your Worship. Um, I echo everyone's comments. I, I don't. Th I think Swan River has done a remarkably good job as a, as a community, and I, I don't see a lot of people bending the rules or breaking the rules or um, there are in, in individual incidents but not anything of significance and candidly um, it takes everyone to pull together because no one knows who has COVID and and so we've done I think a remarkable job as a community uh, and we're in good shape and we need to stick to that until we're through this crisis because we're not over it yet there will be there are people who travel to some extent and and we really need to keep the curve in fact we have no curve at all at this point but to keep it as low as possible so i do say that um i agree um i've only had the one meeting which is the maybe the whole meeting and i i do know that it's not just Lorianne, it's the entirety of the friendship center who's who's got uh, a bunch of facebook things going um, they're going to actually start doing that province-wide uh, pretty soon uh, Councillor Friesen. Mm -hmm. um so uh, I, I don't know what else to add uh, to that. I, I do have a, a couple of things that I think we can start working on, which are um, plans um, for our 
ongoing negotiations with the other municipalities. Once this, once we get through COVID, and, and again, current projections are at the end of June, I think uh, normally we would take the summer off to some extent, but I think we're going to need to reuse that or use that time now because we haven't had the period from March through June. And I think we need to be prepared to go into those negotiations because we don't want to be in a situation, notwithstanding that we've had this COVID situation where um, we end up next fall in the same situations we were this year, where we extend because we haven't completed negotiations. Um, two last points. Uh, I have, um, I shouldn't say that no means because I did speak with Superintendent Poole about um, the um, issue that we're going into camera about tonight. And with respect to the termination agreement, he sent me the draft letter. I've reviewed it and he and I are going to, I think, uh, Derek, our plan was to meet tomorrow on both those issues to speak about them. That's correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and that's it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Delorier. Uh, just uh, the only meeting I've had is the budget meeting. Um, again, I just want to congratulate our administration on the hard work they've done to uh, make sure that uh, our budget looks like it's coming in at a reasonable amount. Um, <coughs> other than that, I just want to encourage everybody to uh, stay safe and uh, and we'll see everybody when we get through this. Thank you. So I, I guess for me, I just, I'll kind of sum it up, you know, like uh, we all said kind of the same thing as far as our community uh, and how well our community has been working together. Uh, you know, from our business community and volunteers and so forth that it, what they're doing to make sure that we all stay safe from from uh, from from anybody's point of view or perspective. <coughs> but you know, also our frontline workers that are out there. You know, we have our own administration that uh, frontline uh, employees of this building to our public works and our guys that are taking care of our you know, water and sewer and, and making sure that we are running the way that we need to run every single day. And those people need to be thanked and, and keep a very close eye on them to make sure that they will always remain uh, healthy and, and safe. And uh, our business community, I know that they're gonna take a bit of a hit over this. And I think that we're gonna have to think about that in the coming weeks, you know, budget wise or tax wise or however that, you know, the, whatever implications that means to them. So we, we need to keep uh, mindful of that in, in, in the coming weeks or, or months because I think that there are going to be some challenges still ahead of us. We'll get through the COVID fit all together, but at the end of the day when we get through it, we're going to have to sit down and, and really take a look at our community and make sure that we can continue to work together as strong as we possibly can and to keep this community as, as good as we possibly can. So. So with that, um, Mr. Kroll, did you have anything else to add? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> so the uh, administration has been uh, uh, working on a, a couple of policies, the um, grants policy and the uh, property development policy <clears throat> to uh, help council uh, um, with their decision making on, uh, on several things to do with uh, the budget and, and how we um, sell property and buy property, those type of things. Um, we've also been working on the uh, bylaw and animal control. That's uh, that's almost a daily thing that we're working on, and uh, we we have had discussions with uh, with the union as uh, as uh, Director Poole has has mentioned. Um, we're also looking at other things, including. Uh, um, the uh the, the makeup of how the rise is is uh operated we're looking at that for the future we just we just finished a continuity plan for viruses and and diseases that um that we didn't have before and, and the province had not really uh been pushing us to do i mean we just we just got our training uh just this past year so <laughs> Uh, it was fortunate that we did get the training anyway so that we were able to put together the continuity plan and I and I thank the whole administration and the managers and, and the and the public works guys and everybody for per, putting uh, input into it so that we could uh, have a pretty solid plan uh, for the for the municipality to uh, operate when, we, when we're having these type of issues happening 
Um, well, I have also uh, just recently uh, reviewed the uh, Brandon uh, Brandon's new deferment uh, policy, uh, reviewing that so that I can give information back to to council in case there's options that they want to uh, take up uh, as far as, uh, as you know, dealing with uh, residents and businesses that are going to be having. We're, we're all certain there's going to be quite a bit of pain coming uh, as far as paying bills and things and. And, and we're trying to uh, trying to inform the council so they can make wise decisions for the uh, town as well. And uh, that's about it, other than taking care of this little virus thing that people seem to be mentioning. So. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. And, and actually, in, in addition to, to my uh, comments, um, definitely thank uh, Mr. Crowley, you and yourself, and, and, and our frontline management team that has done the work and actually getting this uh, this electronic uh, video stream and everything else going. I know that Councillor Gray has been hoping and wishing for this for 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 some time now, and and here we are. And and I think that so far things are moving along pretty good. We are communicating as if we're all sitting in the same room. So um, I thank you. And I didn't realize that we had uh, a, a master of plaster on the payroll here, but. Uh, you uh, you done a, a really good job as far and also with some of our help from our public works people as well. So thank you. All right, so we'll move on to eleven point one. <clears throat> Resolved that the CAO signed the electric service agreement with Manitoba Hydro, allowing for the installation of two street lights on Vivian Street. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. Councillor Gray, Morio, and uh, Wintoni. I have a couple of, que I'm not sure, discussion uh, or questions. Was this in the budget and, and was this part of our, our plan already? I, I don't remember a discussion about it. And so I, I'm a little surprised that we're at this level, but um, that's my first question. Mr. Poole. It, it wasn't brought up in the budget meetings, but I did have Terry increase the, uh, the street light budget by this amount uh, for 2020. When, like say after our budget meeting? Not the, not the one in January, but this most recent budget meeting, uh, we did know the numbers and it, it just simply wasn't discussed. I, and I, that, that's my fault. I, I did not bring that change to council. Okay, but, but was it discussed at all? Like, has, has the whole plan been discussed at some point in January when I was away, maybe? Uh, only, only since the, the crime increase, it was, a, it was a request. We know that a business there has been hit multiple times, and uh, I figured I'd take it to council. Okay, this is the first time? I'm just... This is the first time council's been seen the number, and and the work the agreement yeah okay so the second question is this puts the power in how much is it for the two street lights how much is the total Th this is everything what we'll get out of this is two poles and two lights to make it uh, to where we wanted to go we had to go two spans so there's there's actually quite a bit of work that has to be done on row street but that's not included in our price hydro is paying for that <coughs> Okay. Those are my only questions, Your, your Worship. Councilor Morio. You're muted, Councilor Morio. There we go. Um, to pool, um, I took a look at Vivian Street and there's uh, these two lights. Are they going on the existing two hydro poles that are there? Or are you uh, insinuating there well, from what you just said that uh, they're going to go an extra span to go farther west on Vivian Street? Um, past um, the existing last pole there. Yeah, they're going to have to actually replace that pole for their own spec specification, their own reasons, but uh, and then go another span. And these will be on the south side of the road, but uh, both of those poles will have lights. Okay, so that'll illuminate um, to the uh, um, pretty much the west end of that street then, correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And um, I guess for Mr. Gray's benefit, um, I know uh, at the business consortium meeting that we've been 
the town has been advocating that uh, for residents to bring forward any concerns of street lighting boys and stuff like that and that's where this originated um, come from uh, was that type of request so. deputy mayor with tony um just a, a question mr pool is there any difference between um this type of lighting versus residential street lighting pole street lighting no this will be this will be the exact same uh, ballast so the lights will look identical as any other street it's it's not the metal pole if that's what you're asking they're they're uh, attachments on wooden poles okay um so when we do street lighting in residential areas do residents pay for street lighting on uh, in terms of uh, infrastructure wise uh only only if not residents no developers and development agreements will yeah okay so i guess my question is is that we're looking at and i'm all for lighting I'm all for street lighting obviously you, you know i've i've advocated for street lighting uh, multiple times but there was the question of, of having street lighting um, i'll use the example was curry road where they were building um, where we have six properties in the neighborhood of about 2.4 million dollars of of homes built there but we wouldn't put street lights in it until um, all of the all of the uh, homes were built on that street um, and i understand that it, it's looking similar situation in, in this. I, I pulled up the Google Maps of it. When you look at um, Rose and, and Vivian running there, um, I, I understand there's businesses, but what makes that different than a residential area such as that one? Uh, re really nothing, I guess. The, the I guess what, what the engineering office has always done is we wait for that development to be full before we would bring something to council. Uh, this this has come from a request due to the amount of crime in the area, so that would be the difference. Uh, with Curry Road, if council requests me to to go to Hydro to see what that would cost, we, we can take a look at those numbers. It's it's a simple phone call, but the reason why we wouldn't just bring that forward is we would wait till that development is fully complete. Thank you. All right. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Result the town of Swanover purchased a case 580SN loader back home from Hill Track 1974, incorporated for $98,716 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Gray. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Uh, Mr. Poole, just to confirm um, through the tendering process and the procurement, um, the only thing that wasn't done that we normally do would be the on-site demonstration, correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And then, so everything else was uh, accomplished and come in, came in the spec? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.3 Resolved that the municipality continuity plan, contagious virus, and disease section be adopted for operations and administrative purposes. Moved by. Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor or Deputy Mayor Wintoni. I just wanted uh, to be stated that uh, I think administration for uh, the work that was put into this, um, CAO Kroll and, and, and your team, good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's well done. Further discussion? Um, Councillor Gray. I just wanted to make sure this, this uh, the plan that's here is about how we work through the crisis. The personnel talk that we had uh, at the end of last, uh, at the committee of the whole meeting is not part of the plan. It's just sort of what might happen in those circumstances. 
that we're going to have a further discussion on personnel issues. Is that correct? I would say so, yes. Okay, uh, then I'm ready to vote. Did you want to say something, Mr. Kroll? Well, I, I thought everything was actually settled, but the personnel plan is not uh, part of this continuity plan. The continuity plan is a is a blanket continuity plan that we could pull out for any disease or virus that happens. The personnel plan uh, was uh, an attachment to take care of this particular issue. Uh, okay. but, but that's fine. We can continue to discuss. We have no, uh, we have no uh, immediate plans to make any serious changes with the personnel. Councilor Delorier. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm probably in Mr. Kroll's camp that we had left. I, I hadn't heard any argument that we shouldn't leave with administration. Uh, we, we left part of the, the part of the personnel plan that had already been executed with administration. So I, I guess, I guess obviously we have to discuss it more. I guess maybe we should discuss it tonight in camera then. Fair enough. So you want to hold your vote till then? No, I can vote on this right now because the, the, the personnel issues are, are separate from this. Okay, fair enough. Further discussion then? All in favor? It's carried. Result of the financial statements for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2019 be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All uh, Councillor Morio. No, I thought you were just calling to the vote already. Oh, okay. So, uh, all in favor? Okay. Opposed? It's carried. Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 25926 to number 25995 for a total of 142,845.64. Payroll accounts checks number 4639 to 4643 for a total of 7,354.68. Payroll accounts checks number 4644 to 4649 for a total of 101,228 and 37 cents. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Questions? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 13 3. Whereas under subsections 252 Clause E of the Municipal Act, the municipality may, for municipal purposes, use municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property. And whereas under subsections 252 1 Clause A, a municipality exercising powers in the nature of those referred to in clauses 252 252B. C and E may set terms and conditions in respect of users, including setting the rates or amounts of deposits, fees, and other charges, and charging and collecting them. And whereas under sub subsections 252.2, a charge referred to in Clause 1A may be collected by the municipality in the same manner as a tax may be collected or enforced under this Act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed below. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the following unpaid amounts be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in that manner. Number 1590, uh, November 14, 2019, $12,017.25, demolish and cleanup. Charges were $600.88, total of $12,600. And eighteen dollars and thirteen cents. Uh, tax roll triple zero three triple zero and triple zero one five nine nine two. December second two thousand nineteen six thousand six hundred and fifty seven and forty cents. Replace sewer line charges were two hundred and forty nine sixty six cents. Total six thousand nine hundred and seven and six cents. Tax roll zero zero six zero four zero zero triple zero. May 14, 2019, $190 building permit. Total charges, 190. 
uh, tax rule 021000000000. Now, November 29, 2019, $120 plumbing permit. Total charges $120. 0227000000 tax rule. November 29, 2019, $120 plumbing permit. $120 is the total charge. Tax roll 0227100000. Total amount is $19,104.65. Total charges $850.54. Totaling nineteen thousand nine hundred and fifty-five and nineteen cents, being further resolved that notices be sent to the property owners detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective May first, two thousand and twenty. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by. Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, I'm just wondering how do we get building and plumbing permits not paid for? Uh, it's my understanding that uh, they're supposed to be paid for before they're issued. Uh, Sierra Crow. Uh, if I recall these instances, I believe these were uh, these were after the fact, and uh, they they were effectively laid by the uh, building inspector uh, as, as an enforcement to get the building permit. I believe from these instances, they're double the regular. Yeah, they're double. Process. They're fine, so they're a double. Okay. Does that your yeah. question? Answers it perfectly. If it's a after the fact penalty. Yeah. Okay, Councillor Gray. Have we sent already notices, or do these people know these are coming? Yes. Okay. And and secondly, um, are we sure we want to set the date of, of our interest of May 1st, given COVID? Would we not be wiser to set something like July 1st? I, I, I would ask that the CFO would just ask tax service on whether that can be done. It may be easy, but... That's my question. I believe we go ahead. I believe tax service commented on that to the CAO's group that we call into each day, and they said that council could at will, I think, by resolution, uh, change dates. Okay. So, do we want to? Do we have the appetite to change the date on this, councillor? Certainly, from my perspective, I, I think given the circumstances, we would be we would behoove us to um, wait until after we've gone through the COVID period. I, I don't know who, who's involved. For all I know, it's me. I don't think so. But um, but um, you know, it may be that people will have a difficult time paying this, and I'm not sure that we really want to charge some interest at this particular time, given that we've just gone around the room congratulating everybody on how well they're doing. Um, in combating COVID. Do you, you want to suggest a date then? Sure. I, I'll move that we amend the uh, timeline to July 1st, 2020. And did the mover and the secretary agree? I don't know if that we have to do that, but more than likely, no? Okay. Uh, Mayor uh, Mr. Poole, I'm not sure if you have the answer to this question. Has there been any attempt to put any money on these um, fees since the date that they were uh, issued? I don't know. I'd have to get back to you. Uh, I guess that would be my my contingency. I would I would I respect what uh, Councillor Gray is saying about moving uh, the date um, as of right now, but keep in mind that these were from instances in 2019. If there were payments put on it at some point up until now, I would have no issue changing the date. Um, but if no attempt of any kind of payment was made, um, I don't think a date change is going to matter at this point. Councillor Friesen. I uh, just understood the letters were already sent. Yes. So you have to redo them and send out if we change this. Is that correct? That's questions that I would have to ask our chief. Yeah, we can do that. 
Well, in, in, in that event, if we have to change, if we have to redo the letters, then I, I, I think we can waive the fee later. That's probably a better solution. Okay. So we're, do we want, do we have, do we want to change that date to July the 31st? It, it, if, if someone can confirm that we have to change um, the letters, I mean, I, I don't want to slow us up. I think we should get on with it. But um, so if, if that's true, if, if Mr. Cole, perhaps tell us, if it's true that we would have to change the, the letters that have already gone out, then my view is no, let's go ahead and, and adjust it later if we see deem it appropriate. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, fr from what the province is telling us, uh, we, we can uh, uh, make arrangements with people even even when a, a letter goes out for collecting the money if they contact us and say we can't pay it um, we, we can make adjustments without uh, actually having to come back to council or anything there's uh, there's some leeway there to be able to do that um, and that's what uh, because so many towns across the province are are dealing with this right now uh, these are some of the questions that we're hearing each day on on the phone call, uh, and that was uh, all part of that uh, package of deferments and stuff that uh, we're we're about to talk about right. here sometime soon. Um, so there is there is uh, there is latitude to be able to uh, make adjustments without uh, uh, coming back to council. So if if uh, if the finance officer gets a phone call and from someone and says, "Well, I can't pay it until." October or something, uh, he is free to say, yes, okay, you can pay it in October. Okay, so we're fine with the date of March or May? It's fine. Okay, so then any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <laughs> Result of bylaw 14 2019 special service residential waste and recycling collection be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Watoni. Discussion, Councillor uh, Delorier. No, oh, I was seconding it. Okay. Discussion? Okay. All in favor, it's recorded vote. All in favor? Councilor Delory, I can't see your hand. Okay, it's unanimous. It's Pat. It's carried. Result of pursuit is to sections one fifty two three. The municipal act council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have employee relations and contract negotiation. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Gray. All in favor. It's carried. Meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Council Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, all in favor? It's carried, we're adjourned. Thank you everybody. Uh,